Hey everybody, this is John from Pioneer Nexus MTG coming at you with a top five Pioneer deck list going into July 2023. Now, top of the list, Rakdos Midrange. This deck has been the king of the format for probably the better part of a year now. Um, ever since Winota got banned, this deck really kind of rose to the top and then it's just kind of stayed there. Despite having a little bit of a weakness to Mono Green and decks like Enigmatic Fires, uh, this deck continues to perform well as it has good game plans against control decks, good game plans against the aggressive decks, and obviously Thoughtseize and the Pressure generally pretty reasonable against combo, even if you are a little bit of a dog to something like Lotus Field combo. Now, this is a deck that's ever-evolving. Much like the old Jun decks, you have the core of Thoughtseize, Fatal Push, Blood Tithe Harvester, Fable, Shouldered, and then the pieces around it, whether you're playing Liliana's or if you're playing Graveyard Trespassers, what your mix of two mana removal spells are, and even some of the sideboard cards. Uh, notably, one card I, I find particularly interesting is Lolith. Um, this is a card that I'm honestly surprised hasn't seen more play, um, but though five mana is kind of have a high barrier to entry, even in a format such as Pioneer. But Rakdos, it's kind of the king of doing everything reasonable and in a format that doesn't have too many degenerate power things going on, Rakdos continues to be the king of many different things. Deck we're going with for number two, although you could easily still easily argue that Mono Green is number two. Um, a deck that's been rising for quite some time since Boros Convoke broke onto the scene and some of the creature decks have come back in the format, and that is Rakdos Sacrifice. Now, Sacrifice generally has a solid mashup against the aggressive decks. <clears throat> so, you know, humans, spirits, Convoke, um, any other tribal decks you might run into, Mono Red. Uh, it also tends to boast, I believe, the perception. And this is a deck that I haven't played a ton, so I can't really speak from experience per se but has a generally good Rakdos mid-range matchup because it trades attrition quite well and Cat Oven can be quite obnoxious to deal with. You're stealing your opponent's stuff, smacking him in the face with it, so they kind of get under what Rakdos is doing a little bit and has just enough power to close out the game. Now, where this deck tends to struggle, Mono Green, decks that go over the top of it, much, you know, Blue-White Control, those kind of decks... Although it does have a pretty reasonable mono, uh, game plan against blue white, but you know, enigmatic fires, mono green, decks that go over the top and don't really kill, care too much about the nickel and diming stuff, uh, mayhem devil, cat oven, uh, etc. Deck number three, mono green D. Devotion's been a huge part of the format since the beginning. Um, ever since Canister found that infinite combo, it's been a huge part of the format again ever since. Not much more you can say about it. If you don't disrupt what this deck is doing, it goes over the top of almost anything in the format. It's a very powerful deck. Um, that said, if you can pick it apart with pressure, you know, decks like humans, decks like spirits, this deck can have quite the nightmare of a time. But overall, very powerful deck, something you should be aware of and a deck that is number three on our list this month. A deck that for a little bit kind of got overshadowed by Boros Convoke breaking onto the scene, and that is Mono White Humans. Now, Humans has evolved a little bit from what it had previously been. Uh, one of the key cards of that was the card from March of the Machine Aftermath. This is Copper Coat Vanguard. Um, other humans get plus one, plus O oh, and have Ward One. So it's not a complete Lord effect, but it is a little bit more difficult to remove your creatures. Your creatures hit a little bit harder. All of that's positive. You know, the adoption of ossification in addition to things like a brutal Cathar as your, uh, you know, removal spells. Quite nice. A little bit harder to remove your removal spells. And then you still play some of our brave ele the elements for that one shot kill against decks like Mono Green. Um, the sideboard you're definitely uh, set up to play against. The attrition strategies is those tend to be your Achilles heel, Rakdos Sack, Rakdos Midrange. Some of the Izzet based decks can be quite annoying to deal with. Um, but this is a deck that does have a reasonable mono white matchup or mono green matchup, a reasonable blue white control matchup, and with Thalia Guardian of Thraven, Thalia 
our um, with Adeline anointed peacekeeper then on the sideboard things like Redain has enough disruption to give decks like Lotus Field combo absolute fits so number four on our list this month number five a deck that just keeps trucking along blue white control doesn't do anything particularly spectacular has good sweepers has good counter spells has good planeswalkers doesn't have the best removal spells in the world with March of Otherworldly Light, Faithful Absence. Um, but you have a ton of different sweepers, Temporary Lockdown, Supreme Verdict, Farewell, kind of cover a lot of your bases. Uh, once you get to turn four and you start slamming the Wandering Emperor during your opponent's combat step, and your opponent doesn't know whether to play around the Wandering Emperor or Memory Deluge, um, then you start getting in with the fairies and you just kind of snowball from there. Uh, this is very much a deck that is reasonable against a lot of things, not particularly great in a lot of matchups, but still, a deck that puts up reasonable results, has okay against Mono Green, is okay against Rakdos, at least game one, decent against the aggressive decks, has game against the combo decks, so fairly solid average deck, much like Rakdos, just does it a little bit worse, hence why it's number five on this month's top five lists.